and welcome to Changing India, the show where we give you a unique insight into 21st century India. This week, we turn our attention to the heavens above with a special focus on India's space program. From its early days to record-breaking successes, we explore India's journey into the final frontier. Did you know that India's foray into space research began much before independence? But the real thrust came in the 1960s and 70s thanks to the establishment of ISRO and efforts from visionaries like Satish Dhawan, Vikram Sarabhai and former President APJ Abdul Kalam. So in our first report, we take a trip down memory lane and explore the beginnings of India's space odyssey. Take a look. This was the moment that put the Indian Space Research Organization on the global map. The 39th flight for ISRO put as many as 104 satellites into the Earth's orbit, giving the Indian space mission global bragging rights. Recent missions have cemented India's place as a leader in frugal space technology research. But India's tryst with space began more than 50 years ago. The history of space research in India can be traced back to the 1920s under scientists S.K. Mitra, C.V. Raman and Meghnad Saha. Earlier on, studies were restricted to Earth's atmosphere, weather prediction and the surrounding magnetic field. But the groundwork of space missions was laid in 1962 when Jawaharlal Nehru, alongside scientist Vikram Sarabhai, established the Indian National Committee for Space Research, which would later become ISRO as we know it. A year later, India launched its first rocket into space. Over the next 55 years, ISRO would develop, improvise and launch several indigenously created vehicles into space. The launch of India's first satellite, the Aryabhat, was aided by the Soviets. ISRO also worked with NASA to develop satellite broadcasting technology in India in 1975, which led to the implementation of the SITE program and ultimately the birth of national broadcaster Doordarshan. But it was not until the year 1980 that India would launch an indigenously created satellite vehicle under the leadership of Satish Dhawan and Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Four years later, teaming up yet again with the Soviets, the first Indo-Soviet manned space mission was launched. India's Rakesh Sharma became the first Indian to set foot into space. All these successes would define ISRO's roadmap for the next 33 years. In the last 10 years, ISRO has successfully conducted missions to the Moon, Mars and several satellite launches. But ISRO is hungry for more, with missions to the Sun, Moon and Venus already in the works. Bureau Report, Vion. Over the years, one of the biggest breakthroughs for ISRO has been the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle or the PSLV. Popularly known as the workhorse of the Indian Satellite Program, it has allowed for the country to emerge as a global leader in providing cost-effective yet reliable satellite launch services. So in our next report, my colleague Pratik Suri finds out how India is placed in the international satellite market and also what are the challenges that lie ahead. All that glitters in the dark night sky are not just stars. Space is fast becoming a matter of big business and big bucks. The average annual revenue of the international satellite market over the past few years is estimated to be over 200 billion US dollars. This includes the launch service market, satellite manufacturing, ground equipment and satellite services. The Indian Space Research Organization launches satellites on a commercial basis through Antrix Corporation Limited. With increasing launch capacity, Antrix's revenue for 2015 to 2016 stood at 230 crores, which is about 0.6% of the global launch services market. Those numbers are likely to undergo a radical change going forward. Since 1999, ISRO has launched 180 foreign satellites in February this year, the agency accomplished a global record placing 104 satellites placed in orbit in a single launch. These included 101 satellites belonging to the US, Israel, the UAE, the Netherlands, Switzerland and Kazakhstan. Experts say India standing as a cost-efficient and reliable launch partner is the key reason behind the country's emerging as a serious player in the global commercial satellite launch market. This is also a reflection of 
how the countries are trusting us because we are going to capture a very large segment of the launch uh, you know capabilities in the space economy we are the most cheapest we are the most reliable while isro's counterparts in other countries are unable to match the cost effectiveness the real challenge for india in this segment is likely to come from the private sector in the west for instance so far launching a satellite on the arian spaces arian 5 rocket costs approximately 100 million dollars after taking into account subsidies in comparison the cost of launching a satellite aboard spacex's falcon 9 rocket is around 60 million us dollars data on isro's launches meanwhile indicate a cost of just around 3 million dollars maintaining that edge for india requires rethinking policies to encourage private players in india isro should change that role isro isro should move away from uh, one of a gatekeeper to one of an enabler or a facilitator to enable greater private sector participation because today isro is not able to meet the entire um, set of requirements that is required for india whether it is in terms of uh, both like i said i emphasize uh, national security requirements as well as the commercial needs so there is an idea of outsourcing the pslv launches to a private agency and uh, to my mind some work is already in progress in this regard so now what is the plan of action for coming uh, a decade or so is that PSLV will be fully privatized and a private company may be a public private partnership i don't know exact details about it but that can take up all these launches the advantage which lies with isro or for that matter any agency which comes up subsequently is that we are in a position to do launching in a cost effective manner and isro has already proven the capability and the efficacy of its launcher system it is one of the most reliable launcher systems from being mocked by the western press to becoming the potential powerhouse in the global satellite market india space program has come a long way it is now time to build on this momentum by unleashing the energies and the expertise of the private sector with a well thought regulatory and legal framework this is prateek suri from new delhi beyond At the turn of the 21st century, ISRO turned a new leaf in unmanned space exploration. The frugal yet highly successful Chandrayaan and Mangalyaan missions made the world sit up and take note of India as a serious player in outer space exploration. So what does the future hold in store for such projects? Well, here's a report. A small step for ISRO, but a giant leap for space exploration. The turn of the 21st century brought with it a new set of challenges and opportunities for the Indian space mission. It began in 2003 when Atal Bihari Vajpayee, the then Prime Minister, announced India's intent to launch an unmanned mission to the moon. 5 years later, Chandrayaan-1 was on its way. Chandrayaan's greatest achievement was the discovery of a large number of water molecules on the surface of the moon. Post the success of the lunar mission, ISRO was quick to the Mars Orbiter mission or the Mangalayan. The mission was launched in 2014, making India the first Asian country to attempt the Mars mission. The orbiter gained worldwide acknowledgement for being the least expensive Mars mission till date. There are two objectives for this mission. First and foremost is technology demonstration. That is our ability to build a Mars orbiter spacecraft with the necessary payloads and then take it all the way to the environment of Mars and then orbit it around successfully. The second, if you are able to orbit it, then conduct meaningful scientific experiments with a theme, methane, the presence of methane, and if it is present, what is its origin? After the successful 104 satellite launch world record, ISRO is now spreading its wings. The first one on the launch list is the South Asia satellite. It is a unique attempt by India at space diplomacy. The satellite which will be launched in early May will provide telecommunication and disaster management services to South Asian countries. Going further, ISRO is planning another mission to the moon. The Chandrayaan-2 mission is planned for next year and will carry a six-wheeled rover to conduct studies on the lunar surface. In addition to these missions to the sun, Mars and Venus are also in the works. As the world begins to take note of ISRO, the space agency now wants to increase the frequency of its launches from 7 to 12 every year. 
Following the display of its technological prowess, the present ISRO chief has also hinted at the possibility of an Indian space station. Bureau Report, Vion. Well, let's slip into a short break now. When we return, we see how India's private space explorers are faring and also how the country is reacting to increased militarization and weaponization of space.